continuing from uh, introduction to um, computer communication and network. <clears throat> and I did the communication and network. Okay. So this is uh, more or less continuation of uh, lecture one. So today's um, continuation revolves around uh, terminologies and other um, aspects of uh, uh, in terms of uh, fundamental characteristics of uh, data communication. So we'll look at quite a number of uh, things that makes up the uh, uh, the key characteristics that uh, data communication systems depend on to function, and as well as uh, flows, our information flows, the various types, look at some of the uh, uh, issues, network issues, as well as um, topologies that relate to um, data communication within networks. And then we'll have a number of stuff, okay? So, uh, but generally it's gonna be you know, within the uh, key characteristics that makes uh, data communication possible. Okay. All right. So first, um, the term um, data communi or telecommunication means um, communication at a distance, obviously. So that's why it's telecommunication, and meaning you're talking about communication from, uh, uh, from a range, basically. And the word data refers to information presented in whatever, <clears throat> whatever form is agreed upon um, by the parties creating and using the data. Uh, but generally, data communications are the, the exchange of data that's between two devices uh, over a transmission medium, which could either be a wire cables or the airwaves. So those are some of the key, uh, some of the technologies that you should keep in mind, you know, when it comes to um, the communication. You know, you just more or less about exchange of information between two devices. It has to be an agreed uh, um, exchange between the two devices. And it's usually true mediums or various mediums that could either be wired or wireless. Now, from the fundamental point uh, in terms of characteristics, uh, data communications uh, depends heavily on uh, uh, key fundamental characteristics to make it to make the transmissions uh, effective. So, I want to look at some of those and see how they play out. Uh, uh, we're probably going to be looking at uh, delivery method. How the, the communication um, um, handles delivery of your information, the accuracy part, um, timelines, and uh, when it comes to jitters, <clears throat> how they handle jitters. So those are, these are some of the four keys or four uh, characteristics that um, uh, that makes it possible for the effectiveness of uh, the communication to be possible within obviously computer systems. Okay, so keep these four key uh, fundamental characteristics in mind. There's delivery, accuracy, timelines, and jitters. These are very, very important. Because once, uh, when it comes to the re delivery part, you want to make sure that the information is uh, it's able to go from a source to a destination. It has to be, it has to get through the, 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 antenna, the antenna device. Uh, for the information to be considered effective, you know, otherwise it just wouldn't um, have any uh, purpose if there's only uh, a single source of information. And obviously, you can carry it across. So, hence, you know, the effectiveness of the communication systems uh, depending on some of these uh, fundamental characteristics. Accuracy is one of them. You know, we want to make sure that information we transmit um, uh, have the right message you know we, we don't want to send information that uh, uh, that at the onset has a, has a, has a, has a, has a particular uh, form or sends a particular message but when it gets a delivery end or the receiving end 
it gets completely um, misinterpreted or misread or mis uh, misrepresented. You know, we don't want that. So accuracy is one uh, part of it as well. Uh, forms part of the characteristics. And then timeline, it's very important. We don't want information that would take forever to get delivered, obviously. You know, we're doing computer systems over here. So informations, uh, uh, the timeline involved in, 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 in the community, the data communication and information delivery is quite essential. And then look at the jitters, which are more or less related to the, uh, uh, for lack of a better word, probably use um, a buffering, you know. So usually that happens when uh, the information doesn't have the required uh, bandwidth capacity to, to transmit, then it start getting, uh, uh, it's, not, it's not just, you know, it doesn't really flow the way you would want it to flow, you know. Think about watching a YouTube on a really, really low bandwidth uh, transmission, you start noticing some of these uh, jitters. Information just doesn't uh, flow. It buffers, it kind of goes and then stops and reloads and yeah. Key characteristics of uh, or features of uh, uh, jitters, you know. So we want to avoid some of those as well. We want information to flow. So when you're watching, when you stream information online, it can you, you get that flow of it. And even when it comes to uh, uh, talking on, on, on you know, WhatsApp calls or other uh, VoIP services, we don't want a situation where uh, the information being communicated um, is kind of distorted, you know, at the receiving end. So the other person or other device on the other, other end uh, doesn't get a clearer uh, message across. You know, so those are all forms of jitters. Okay, so these are some of the key um, fundamental characteristics of uh, data communication uh, effectiveness. Um, there are five components that makes data communication possible for some of these to actually um, uh, embrace it effectiveness. And I want to look at some of those as well. Uh, we have uh, message is one of the key things when it comes to the components of data communication. Uh, we want to have a message that needs to be delivered. So if you're delivering something, I think it has to be something. It has to be a message. If you go for delivery, you 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 want to deliver something, right? So that something is a message. So one of the five uh, key components of uh, data communication. The other one is sender. You need a sender and you need a receiver. Somebody has to be ready to send or a device has to be ready to send information. And then uh, uh, before any kind of information transmission can be possible. Okay, because devices don't just sit back and by themselves and, and not for information and consider that data communication. Obviously you need a sender. And then you also need a, a receiver, somebody who's gonna receive that or a device, I keep using somebody, I don't know. I mean a device that would receive the uh, uh, the, the, the message being sent. And then you need a medium as well. Obviously, this information that you, that's been transmitted between uh, two parties or two devices, a sender, a sender and a receiver, need some kind of medium, kind of like a, uh, uh, a channel through which the information can be, you know, uh, passed through between the sender and then the receiver. And that's the medium. So this way, you have uh, uh, your copper wires, your twisted pair cables, your either coaxials or fiber optics play a key role, as well as the airway. And then finally, the fifth uh, uh, a component of data communication happens to be the protocols, which sets the uh, kind of like the, the, the rules that the uh, the, 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 the messages needs to follow or the delivery of the message needs to follow in order to conform to specific uh, standards uh, for, for the transmission to be possible. So we have message, sender, receiver, medium, and then the protocol. Okay, they're, they're kind of like the, the rules, the, uh, the rules that governs how these, these all these uh, four 
needs to kind of like follow through in order to get a, an effective delivery of the message. Okay, so protocols will form the standards, you know, that's been laid out for the transmission to be possible within uh, any kind of information exchange or any kind of data communication within uh, various systems. Okay, so those are the five uh, components. Um, when it comes to how the information is actually uh, transmitted over the channels or the mediums, we also want to look at the direction of the, the flow, I mean, the directional flow of the data. And there are three, I think there are three, there are three main directional flows that uh, these messages or this transmission or this fundamental component needs to, uh, um, that needs to go through or that you have to go through. Uh, the first one would be uh, as simple as directional flow, which is, uh, usually when we talk about simplest, we're talking about how a message gets taken from uh, one device to another in just one directional form. So it means that this, it's, the, it, it's either the message going one way or the other way. It, that both are not being present at the same time. No, it's not. It doesn't work that way. So for simplest transmission or directional flow information, you'd have uh, one device sends the information at a time, and then the other also sends at a different time. So they are not simultaneous. You know, uh, a, a typical example would be using a uh, uh, what you might call it. Uh, Walkie talkies, that would be a good one. One example, if you think about devices, device wise, walkie talkie, uh, where you, for, for information to um, uh, to flow, you, it'd be, no, no, sorry, sorry, I'm, I'm getting this a bit. Uh, yeah. Simplest here is purely just one directional. So information is only flowing one way. That's about it. And a typical example in this scenario over here would be. Um, a radio station broadcasting their, their, mess, their, their radio services or their message across the airwave or a TV station transmitting their uh, video transmission just one way. Obviously, you know that uh, you can only watch TV, which has been broadcast from a transmitter, but you can allow the TV to send information back, especially on a typical analog system. Today, on digital systems, we do have it right two ways. You can you can have both transmission going uh, taking place, but we're looking at the the, the three main directional flow of uh, data, data communication, and the first simplest is just one way. So a walkie-talkie doesn't fall over here. A walkie-talkie actually falls within the haptoplus, where information flows uh, uh, one each way uh, at a given point in time. So, like for instance within these two devices. This was sent at one time, and then like, this guy was to reply at another time. And this is where a walkie-talkie plays a key role. If you ever use a walkie-talkie before, you will notice that um, when one person wants to say something, they, they have to press a knob and then talk. And then when they want to hear, they have to release so they can hear. So it's the information flow happens one directionally, at a given point in time. It's not simultaneously, same time. It's not simultaneously. It happens one at a given point in time. So one, one, one device sends information, and then after that time expires, then another device also sent. So you get it? So if this device here was transmitting information to this device, this has to wait until the information gets to its turn before it can actually reply. So the times are always going to be different, okay? But however, when it comes to the third directional flow, which is a full duplex, information can be transmitted uh, both ways simultaneously. So you can be talking at the same time, uh, uh, listening as well, uh, which is what today's um, most devices are today. Most of your uh, mobile devices have that feature. You can talk at the same time and hear at the same time. You know, so that becomes a full duplex where uh, the, the 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 flow direction it it, it ha it's, ha it's happening simultaneously. Uh, unlike the half duplex, it's 
one one at a time. You know, you 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 send information, and then uh, the other part has to wait until the information gets delivered before they can reply back. And then on the on the the first uh, level of the directional flow, it's just one direction where it's just uh, one device sending information across. Like I pointed out earlier, a typical example here would be your radio stations and then your TV stations transmit information uh, uh, to you, which is just purely one directional, one way. You don't you don't get to uh, participate in the information being transmitted or in the information transmission. Okay, so your TV stations and your radio stations falls on the simplest, and then your half the plus would have would consist of you know devices like the uh, walkie talkies. Okay, so half the plus uh, information gets transmitted um, one at a time basically. And then you do have your full duplex where you have its uh, information being transmitted or the flow of information happens uh, simultaneously. It's the same either way. Uh, so you can, like I said, you can send and receive at the same time. Okay. And as I mentioned, that's what to do most of your computer systems, your phone, phones or smart devices or uh, handle full duplex today. They'll be able to uh, transmit and receive at the same time on one particular medium, okay? Either, you know, whatever medium it is, okay? You know, wired or wirelessly. So great. So that is the um, the direction of um, uh, data flow. Uh, now we look at some of the key uh, uh, issues that would affect some of these uh, 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 data communication flow when it comes to uh, what you might call it up when it comes to uh, how the components actually communicate information as well as some of the fundamental characteristics that goes with it. So we want to look at uh, uh, what are the key issues that are bound to uh, uh, happen when it comes to the communication. The first one probably be a, will probably be a network uh, uh, criteria uh, which, will, which will handle issues like performance uh, performance here relates to uh, throughput delays uh, and what have you. So generally, when it comes to performance, we're looking at uh, throughput and delays. And, and as I said, that that those are key issues that that relates to how uh, information flows happens within the communication. Yeah, so we kind of like group want to group some of the key issues uh, uh, and. Uh, and uh, network, network, network criteria, so <laughs> network criteria, and uh, the uh, in terms of network criteria, uh, we're gonna have about about three um, uh, categories or groupings that we wanna look at when it comes to uh, network issues or key network issues. Like I said, the first one would probably be uh, performance. And performance relates to um, throughput and delays. So you're looking at how good, um, how well the uh, the information being transmitted can be handled within the uh, given bandwidth required for the transmission. So the throughput plays a key role. If do you have enough bandwidth to transmit information, and if if you do, uh, what are some of the delays that 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 that, that comes up? Okay, so each key issues, keep that, keep that in mind. We are talking about the key issues that you're gonna encounter when it comes to the communication and at a network le uh, level. Okay, so network criteria, we're looking at performance. We also look at the reliability. And reliability here, we look about, we, we wanna talk about the data transmitted. Uh, are they identical to uh, whatever was received? So assuming you sent uh, the high message uh, from the onset uh, at the receiving end or from the sending point at the receiving end is it the same high message has it changed are they identical or have they uh, have they changed form shape I don't know uh, in terms of content have they changed so uh, that, that, that falls under that falls under the reliability the other one is measuring of the frequency failure within the system. How often does uh, uh, 
uh, that have been transmitted failed. You know, is it very frequent? Because uh, when it comes to uh, the communication in general within your systems, or especially network net systems, um, uh, uh, SLAs or service level agreement are quite important. Uh, that's why ISP sometimes um, uh, can can tell because these are inevitable reliability in terms of uh, whether there's going to be information failure or not are, are going to be uh, they're going to be inevitable because you're dealing with computer systems and various uh, other component that goes with it. You know, okay, of course, network in general here. Uh, you're going to have to deal with some of these issues, but the question is how frequently does it happen, and how do you guarantee the reliability of it? So at least you can say that okay, uh, for a service level agreement within a given service, within a given bandwidth uh, service or data transmission service, you can say okay, I can guarantee about uh, ninety five percent of information getting de getting delivered, and only five percent has a failure rate. Okay, or you can guarantee only one percent, or even point one percent. It's always ideal to go for some of those high um service level agreements uh uh from your service providers when an isp says i'm going to give you i want to assure you uh, a 99.99 percent um sla that, that's a good that's a good service level agreement it basically start telling you that uh when you sign on to our service we can guarantee that we can guarantee that your message will successfully delivered and you need to reliability and you only have to worry about 0.1 percent. That that's in that 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 gotcha, that's good because like I said want um, that perform want that accuracy within information transmitted. The time it takes um, a link to recover as well is also a key important uh, key part of the key issues with the networks. Okay, so when there's a failure, how quick does the system recover itself? You know, some systems are designed to to handle some of these recoveries uh, uh, dynamically and automatically. And the question is how effective and reliable are those systems in terms of how they handle recovery uh, rates. And that's where you think about how good a device is built or how good the implementation of the system is. And those are some of the key guarantees that can help address uh, reliability. But without those, you can have that these, it becomes key issues. Okay. So it's like I said, network key issues that I was looking at. The other part, the third part of the another network criteria is some um, security, which is protecting the data from uh, unauthorized access. We really don't want the uh, the wrong kind of people having access to the information that we are that we're transmitting. Okay, so how do you secure this information? It's always a huge issue today. Um, security is a huge part of um most computer network systems or computer communicate data, commu data communications systems a lot of um, businesses are employing and paying a huge amount of money for security um, experts to make sure their information don't get in the wrong hands okay? so security is a huge issue and it's a key issue obviously so there has to be a way to um, uh, to, to, to address some of these things we definitely have to look at that from a very uh, a critical point, you know. Uh, technologies that we mentioned up here, there's throughput, which is actually, or throughput relates to the bandwidth, as I mentioned earlier within that. Um, so it's either throughput or bandwidth, uh, which is usually the channel um, uh, that, uh, that handles a number of bits that can be transferred uh, per given second. So when you say throughput, you're basically looking at uh, yeah, the bandwidth of a channel uh, to handle a specific number of bits uh, within a given transfer per second. Okay. The other one is latency and delay. So delays. latency and delay are the same word basically. And that's usually the channel. Uh, it's where the channel is, uh, has a time uh, the time lapse between sending information and, and receiving at the earliest possible time. Okay, so it's a two key terminologies or, or that we also need to take consideration when it comes to uh, 
the performance of within the key issues and a network uh, uh, network of data communication services. So yeah, show throughput or bandwidth. Uh, the channel is the number of bits it can transfer per second, whereas the latency or delay of the channel is the time that allows between send information and the and the time it takes to receive it at the earliest possible time or the its reception at a particular at a given uh, point in time. So the earliest you can get an information relays how um, how you can deep compute the uh, the delays and the latency of the given channel of transmission. Okay. Now from this point on, well, we've talked about a number of stuff over here, more or less the fundamentals as well as the uh, intros. Okay, so we're just building up on it. I want to look at some um, uh, topologies, network topologies that relates to uh, of how computers uh, are interconnected within a given network. This is quite essential. Uh, the fact that we have all these directional flows and messages, we, we still have, to have a structured way of uh, handling how the uh, information uh, it, it's, it's uh, or the system is it's connected to uh, to the, to basically um, handle uh, uh, the information being transmitted as well as address some of these key issues that we have. So topology is defined as the way hosts are connected to a given network. Okay, and obviously when it comes to that, you're looking at specific goals. Uh, that you want to address, and some of those specific goals are more geared towards addressing some of these issues here. Okay, so one of the one of the goals is to to get high throughput, obviously to get high bandwidth, and then minimize the uh, the latency. Okay, so yeah, so the terminologies as I mentioned, the throughput and then the bandwidth, as well as the latency and then it, or its delays or the delay part of it. Okay, so yeah, topology, which defines the uh, the way um, hosts are connected to uh, networks, and yeah, uh, network uh, goal issue goal goal issues is to address um is to basically obtain high throughput and have lower uh, latencies or delays within transmission. Okay, so we just so basically you can say that. Uh, topologies are more or less designed to help address issues um, that relate to uh, networks like throughput, delay, reliability, security, and what have you, or performance, reliability, security. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, goals obviously high throughput and then uh, low uh, latency is one of them. Okay, so from that point on, let's look at the, uh, let's dive into uh, the various topologies that uh, that makes uh, uh, computer networks and the connectivity possible, or the uh, way we design uh, network um, topologies to address some of these key issues, or to provide, uh, or to make room and be able to support some of these goals. Uh, one of the, um, okay, so someone the other thing there was something here. Okay, so I think, uh, and then we other 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 terminologies. We have bandwidth, which on the telecommunication refers to the range of radio frequencies uh, that is used in most radios or telecommunication transmission, as well as its receptions. And when it comes to computing, we're looking at communication capacities. Which more relates to the capacity of the trend of the communication channel. For example, a connection to the internet is often measured based on the number of bits being transmitted per given second. Okay, so which would, in other words, fall under um, uh, the the throughput part, which is the bandwidth, right? Great. 
And then you do have uh, the data transmission rate, which is the maximum amount of information, which is the bit per second, that can be transmitted uh, along a given channel. So we're looking at uh, how much of, of our information or how much bits of information can you transmit within a given second uh, or in a specific uh, channel or along a specific channel. And we talk about latency already as the uh, which is synony synony uh, synonymously as the, 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 the delay, which is uh, expressed as the, uh, the time it takes for transmission from one, des from one designated point to another. Okay. Okay, so now let's, like I said, let's, now let's get into the, the topologies. We do have mesh topology, star topology, bus topology, and ring topology. When you take a mesh topology, you're looking at uh, devices that are uh, that are that are kind of like uh, interconnected uh, at a multiple point or with multiple uh, points of reference. Uh, so you're assuming that you have about uh, uh, three devices or four to five devices and you want to interconnect them on the mesh it means that uh, each device must must have probably um, um, a connecting point to each and every other device within that network which is the five devices so each one uh, each one of them must have a way of interconnecting to each other uh, that would probably make the each device have at least um, uh, three po or ports or three connectivity points if they want to accommodate all five devices. Yes. And that topology is, is, is on the other hand, uh, use a central hub where more or less you kind of like uh, centralize the, the, the device's uh, point of connectivity either through a, a hub or a switch. So, and generally, that's what is most ideal for most uh, uh, networks today. Most networks today that we use within offices, homes, um, uh, businesses, institutions, or what have you, all use the star topology. It's much more uh, easy to manage because now you only have one point where all the devices that connect to. So, if it's a problem, you have to address it from that uh, particular. Uh, uh, intermediate device or the central point, unlike the mesh where you'd uh, you'd have uh, uh, well or less a number of uh, uh, points that you have to be uh, worried about in case this the information flow it's not coming through to a particular uh, device. Right, let me just put a picture. Okay, so here we go. And so with a mesh and a star, you see your form. So with a star, you do have a central point that device to connect to, whereas the mesh is just each and every device has a way of connecting to each other device within that particular network. And, and with, with this, the, the the advantage of this is that when it's this, there's no single point of failure. The uh, that's that's the advantage. There's no single point of failure here. Because you do have multiple points for the for the for the five devices to interconnect and send or receive information back and forth. You know, the, the the only disadvantage here is it's cost. There's cost involved because it means that each device would have to have, like I said, in this case, uh, there are four points. Like it's there five. There has to be four. Yes. So each device would have, a, would have to have um, four ports the network port that will help them interconnect at the other four devices. Yeah, exactly. Since there are five, you need four uh, interconnecting points. So cost is one of the biggest issue here. And advantage-wise, you'd have uh, less single point of failure. Uh, with this, you'd, with the star, you'd have a you you do have a, 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 a single point of failure, which is your uh, intermediate. Uh, uh, device that you every device can interconnect to. Um, so in this case, either your switch or your hub will be the central point. But for as long as um, this device is well 